Hi there. Welcome back to my rants. Um, if you're enjoying the podcast that we've done so far, please do me a big favour, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more of them, hit the subscribe button and notify notifications and they'll tell you when we get a new one out. So, uh, welcome back. What I want to do in this uh, episode is discuss the new document that the SNP have um, distributed on the 20th of November 2023, telling us, and I quote, a fairer future, how Scotland can thrive in the European Union. So when I opened up this document issued today by the SNP, I thought at the end of it, I'll understand their reasoning why they think they're going to become part of the EU if they ever gain independence. Um, so I'll read through the document and uh, go through each paragraph explain what it means or what uh, they're talking absolute nonsense about. So, it starts off, the argument for Scotland's place in the Union has never been under greater strain. That's just an opinion, that's not a fact. That's the opinion of anyone who wants independence because it's what they buy into. A stagnant economy under-resourced infrastructure and public services that have been slashed to the bone represent a shameful legacy of successive Labour and Conservative governments. Okay? So infrastructure, public services. These are uh, devolved powers. These are things that the Scottish Government can actually sort out. But we should leave the Union because they are slashed to the bone. I've felt for a long time that the SNP have slashed things to the bone. You look at potholes and all the infrastructure that we've got in Scotland, it's atrocious. And as they get worse and people get a wee bit unhappier, they always want to blame the incumbent government and they just point the finger at the worst Westminster every time somebody's not happy with something. So, yeah, that's good. So the, the, the second paragraph is the reason to believe the United Kingdom Union is because of things that the Scottish Government can actually control itself. So that's, that's bizarre. But there is another union that offers prosperity and opportunity where the UK can only offer stagnation and decline. Again, that's just an opinion. There's nothing factual there. It's just someone deciding that's what they feel. Um, so apparently they feel that the European Union obviously would offer prosperity and opportunity. Well, we had that for a good few decades and I can't remember it given as much prosperity or opportunity. However, I digress. Here is why an independent Scotland can look forward to a fairer, wealthier and greener future as part of the European Union. This will be interesting. The benefits of EU membership. Despite voting 62 to 38 percent to remain in the European Union, Scottish voters were ignored throughout the negotiations and forced to endure the hardest of Brexits. Two things there. We keep going on about this. Partly the UK, Scotland, um, not getting what it wanted, but it wasn't Scotland that was voting to stay in the EU, it was the whole of the United Kingdom. And unfortunately for those who wanted to remain, they lost. And this enduring the hardest of Brexits. Um, if you want to go on Google, um, SNP abstaining from votes that would have given us an easier Brexit. They didn't want the UK government to have a nice, comfortable Brexit. They wanted to make it as awkward as possible, like a child in the playground stamping its feet when they don't get what it one. And they certainly did down at Westminster. Anyway, um, um, businesses would have the same opportunities as other member states to access EU funding, such as support for agriculture, infrastructure, regional economic development, and guaranteed participation in projects such as Horizon Europe, which supports research and innovation. Again, devolved powers. If you want to improve agriculture, infrastructure, and the regional economic development, then crack on. Nobody's stopping you. Scotland would be free, that's a good one, of the disastrous and damaging Brexit being imposed by the UK government and which both Labour and Tories are in agreement on. No, Remainers all agree on. Again, opinion, 
nothing factual here, and a third way down the document, by the way, and we've not seen anything that's factual. The Westminster government's own financial watchdog thinks Brexit will cut national income. Thinks national income by 4%, compared with EU membership, wiping around $100 billion from the e sorry, UK economy and leaving each of us on an average earnings of £1,300, about £100 a month. What's off? They think. Still not get any facts, we've just got opinions. During the cost of living crisis facing an ever more unstable global landscape, Scots deserve security and stability. Well, yeah, be nice. Which cannot and will never be assured by the chaos, there's a nice word, of Westminster. Key word there. So what this is saying is coming to the British Union going to the European Union. Suddenly we will have security and stability that Scots deserve. However, the reason, and they stayed words, we have this issue is because of an unstable global landscape. That means the whole world, doesn't it? So it wouldn't really matter if you're in the UK or the EU, if you're in Scotland, England, Ireland, Wales, Italy, Sweden or Greece. There's a global landscape of instability. Okay, still no facts. The EU would provide more choices with Scottish professional qualifications being recognised throughout. What choices of what? Getting a job in Europe? You can get a job in Europe just now. And the rights of Scots would be protected by EU law, benefiting from guaranteed minimum working conditions and protected social security rights. The suggestion is there that if you're in the union with the United Kingdom, you would not have working conditions or protected social security rights, which I think is total bunkum, isn't it? It's just a lie. Um, mm, oh, I've just jumped a little bit far down there. Give me a second, guys. As a Scottish citizen, you would have the right to live, visit, study and work freely in an EU member state. We actually do have those rights just now as a non-EU member state. However, and here's one, that's a great one, without burdensome paperwork. So what they're actually saying is, if you join the EU, you can do it without some awkward bits of paper to fill out. It's fantastic, isn't it? Let's leave a union, so we don't need to fill out any paperwork. You would have the right to equal access to health care if you fall sick or have an accident while travelling in the EU. Okay. When assessing your career options, you could take advantage of Erasmus Plus scheme to stay abroad and develop your language skills. So there's two things in that first paragraph. What I actually done, I, I had a look before hit and record, and a European healthcare card that you can get as a British citizen says on it you get some um, hospital care free and some at a reduced rate. I thought, well, how does that compare to people in the EU at the moment? So I just Googled Ireland and see what their citizens had to do when they go to the other EU countries because, well, the website would be in English, wouldn't it? So it was the easiest one for me to Google. And guess what? I looked at the terms and conditions if you get a European health card in the Republic of Ireland, and they are identical <laughs> to the benefits you get if you get one from the UK. So there would be no difference to the healthcare provided within the EU. So this equal rights to healthcare, we have that just now. So I'll tell lies suggesting that you would lose that if uh, you're not part of the EU. So safeguarding Scotland's democracy. The security of Scotland's democracy is threatened more now than at any other time since devolution began. The security of Scottish democracy. I'm unsure what that means, but again, it's just an opinion. It's nothing factual. Um, 
Being part of the UK has put the integrity of the Scottish Parliament in doubt with Westminster politicians passing draconian legislation that could never become law in independent Scotland. I think they're talking about the sex rights and stuff like that. You know, these stuff that the Scottish Parliament tried to pass. After taking legal advice, telling them that they couldn't do it, they'd done it anyway to force the government, Westminster government's hand and actually ending up in high courts. Um, so that must be what they're talking about here. They could just pass the laws, you know, the silly ones that they, they wanted and these draconian legislators in Westminster wouldn't be able to stop their idiocies. But they wouldn't even pass the EU. As an independent country in the European Union, Scots would never have to fear Westminster crackdowns on democracy or a right-wing agenda being pushed by politicians unelected in Westminster. How do you have an independent country in the European Union? It's a sort of play on words, so I think there's sort of more nonsense in there. Both Labour and the Conservatives have a preference to centralise power in Westminster, with Labour leader Starmer having recently U-turned on his sweeping constitutional reforms, which included a proposal to replace the unelected House of Lords. This centralisation of power in Westminster reduces Scotland's voice and puts power in the hands of politicians who didn't vote for. So what you want to do is come out of that and go into the European Union, which, guess what, is run by unelected members. And you're even more watered down in your say in a country the size of Scotland than you are just now at Westminster. So, more lies. A Conservative Prime Minister went so far as to claim devolution had been a disaster. I tend to agree with him. This view stems from the notion that Scots make their own choices at elections. I think it's more than that, but yeah, I'll take that one on the chin. The Scots do make bad choices at elections. And it shows a blatant disregard for Scottish voters to choose their own politicians in the direction of their country. Go and look at the last election results in Scottish Parliament. The Scottish National Party do not have a majority. And the only way they got one was through a coalition with people that nobody voted for. The Green Party, unelected, they didn't want a single constituency seat. They won seats only on the regional vote, which is basically a um, representation vote. They never won a single community. They never, they never came top in anybody's votes. But Westminster's bad. Um, Westminster has frequently proven difficult to engage with and has repeatedly signed like devolved governments throughout these aisles, particularly during the coronavirus pandemic and Brexit process. Going with the SNP's uh, failure during the pandemic, I'm quite glad. But again, this is just opinions that they're putting on this paper to tell us how Europe's going to be great. Successive Conservative governments have passed draconian legislation cracking down on the right to vote and the right to protest. Have they? There's been protests every week. With the current Tory administration even entertaining the possibility of displaying the European dis this applying the European Convention on Human Rights for Asylum Seekers. Being part of the EU would strengthen Scotland's commitment to human rights and protect Scots from a slippery slope that ends with politicians deciding which human beings deserve rights and which don't. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's a British, European or Scottish Parliament. Guess what? Politicians get to decide which human beings deserve rights and which do not. You have the same problem. A Labour government would not offer the change Scotland desperately needs. Keir Starmer has performed so many policy U-turns that it's almost impossible to find any major point of divergence between Labour and Conservative. He's joined in calls to stop the boats. I think that's a great thing to stop because people die in the boats. And has ruled out repealing Tory legislation such as police crime, sentencing and court bills that limited the rights to protest or the new voter ID laws that disproportionately target young migrant and low-income voters. Having people prove who they are before the vote. Doesn't sound like a bad idea, but the SNP don't want it. It's clear that being part of the UK puts Scotland's democracy in danger of being overruled. Marginalised and disregarded. Westminster's a flawed forum for the UK's democracy. My God, we're talking about the world. And we're talking about flawed forums. Wow. Both Labour and Conservative parties railing against reform. 
So this other party full of Europeans will miraculously be different. Okay. The voice of Scottish voters would be protected in Europe, shielding Scotland from democratic backsliding and infringement of rights and freedoms that have become the norm under the Tories. I'm not quite sure how you prove that, but there you go. It's just going to happen. <laughs> We're going to have more protected rights and part of a larger parliament where you have less of a say. But anyway, anyway, um, we're near the end of this, thankfully. A better relationship with the world. Oh, it's lovely. As part of the UK, Scotland often watches in horror as successive governments and prime ministers make repeated foreign policy blunders and align themselves for the worst of allies. Rishi Sunak, sorry, Rishi Sunak has allied himself with right-wing populists. How dare he? How dare he not be left wing? Who have enacted anti immigration policies. I don't think anybody's ever said we shouldn't have immigration. And sought to remove parental rights from same sex couples. You should just stay away from these same sex things, SNP. Believe me, you're not going to convince anybody by going down that argument. Meanwhile, Labour leader Keith Keir Starmer who may be the UK's next Prime Minister, is building relationships with a populist leader in the Middle East with the help of Tony Blair. He continues to resist calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, despite the BBC reporting all these deaths, including children. Right, we're, we're doing that one to death. Um, again, I don't know how tell us how bad Peter Stammer is, because I mean, I mean, you've been to think such a great thing that you told us at the start of this document. An independent Scotland would be able to have a healthier, stronger relationship with countries around the world. We well, can't do that just now. Setting our own foreign policy based on what's best for our citizens. You don't have a foreign policy just now and you're giving boodles of money away. Don't think that's so good for your citizens. Scotland would have an internationalist, compassionate world view from free from the narrow and anti-immigration obsession of Westminster. Well, this is opinions again, I'm not really having any facts, but interesting. The cold reality is, just in the last paragraph, thank God, the cold reality is that the UK no longer behaves like a serious country on the world stage. Brexit, the Rwanda plan, and the humiliating Pernas permacrisis, I beg your pardon, of successive Tory governments have all contributed to the worst possible perception of the UK. Scotland deserves so much better, full stop, end of document. That just seemed like a tirade about how bad the Tories are. I didn't see one bit in there telling me how good the SNP are. Nothing, nothing factual about why it would be better in the EU, just opinions. But... This document was headed, A Fairer Future, How Scotland Can Thrive in the European Union. And it gave us nothing but SNP bluster. Slag the English, sl sorry, slag Westminster, slag the Tories, and now they've got a new wee caveat in there, they slag the Labour Party, so... These are crackpots, guys. Could you just stop? And there's nothing in there even to explain how you're actually going to join the EU. You say, oh, well, we might be able to do this, we might be able to do that, you won't have a, bank, a centralised bank, you won't have a currency. And these things you need to be in the EU. Stop it. Stop the noise. Go and govern, govern a parliament with the powers you have. And stop annoying society. And stop wrecking the Scottish people. Pulling them apart by this polarisation of independence and the union. We had a referendum, for God's sake. You told us you were going to have a a pseudo referendum or whatever bloody stupid name Nicola told us, and they all bought into that for a year, and then she buggered off and they had their party conference and decided that was a lot of bollocks, we're not going to do that. You keep pulling and pulling and pulling. Stop, try stop talking about independence for at least 12 months and go and govern your country. See if you do a really good job of that. You may actually convince people that you're grown up enough to have a go for a meal. But this is our nonsense. And the constant nonsense we've had since he set a date for the referendum. You've been a one-trick pony and you've destroyed a country. So thank you very much. Stop writing shite and f*** off.